What is going on, family? It's Elijah here. I just wanted to share my thoughts on the George Floyd situation. Now, unless you've been under a rock, you have seen um, what was going on. And if you watch that video, you probably have some similar reactions to me. Because when I saw that and I saw that uh, that police officer on the back of this guy's neck for about nine minutes, it brought feelings of anger, disgust. I did think like, wow, man, this is a, a, another incident of racism. But I even went beyond that saying this. This is someone who's created in the image of God being basically tortured on uh, social media. And we all seen it. You all seen people yelling at the cops, telling them, hey, get off them, relieve them. And you saw the other guy trying to hold them back. None of the other officers did something. And I believe that they all should be charged. They should all have their day in court. And um, I think the majority of people, I would say 99 percent of people would agree with that. I don't know what the other one percent are thinking. But if you saw that video, then you know exactly where I'm coming from because it was so disturbing and it was just hard to watch. And I wouldn't recommend you go watch it if you haven't seen it. There are pictures all over the place of what was going on. And when you have a man lying there in restraints with people on his back and he's saying that he can't breathe and, uh, and he's no longer responsive and you continue to stay on his back, you deserve to go to jail. I'm sorry. There needs to be accountability. Now, for those of you who are out there watching this video, I know that you've been through your wide array of emotions and my heart just goes out to you. Let me just say this. I am praying for you. I have been thinking about everyone. I have been seeing all the different things that everyone has been posting and not posting and just uh, pain, anger, frustration, people who are ready to fight, people who are scared, uh, people who feel guilty. I've been praying for all of you guys and everybody is reacting to this in a different way. So I want to say this to all you guys. Like this thing was just, it was just not right. 99% of people agree that this was an injustice, probably even more than 99% of people. But I see things on social media uh, and I see the, the media just headlining things in such a way that it's meant to cause di di division. It's meant to cause this emotional reaction. So I would say in this time, as we're looking at these things and then we're navigating these things, we need to all make sure that we are walking in grace with each other. You're going to white people, you're going to have some black friends who are just angry. They, they, they're ready to fight. They're ready to go to war. Now, I don't think that people should be going to war over this, but I do think that you got to be gracious for people who want to go to war over this. Like, and also, um, uh, uh, black people, you might have some white friends who feel guilty right now and they just don't know what to say. I mean, I was kind of silent when it came to putting out a video like this because I spent time in prayer. And I'll give you an example of the process that I went through uh, towards the end of this video before I even thought about releasing this. So that's one thing. We need to all have grace with each other. Everybody's responding dif differently. Don't assume because someone has responded a certain way that that is revealing their character. Unless someone says something blatantly just disrespectful or racist. But even then, this is a difficult time that everyone is dealing with. And we're all trying to navigate this thing uh, in this melting pot of different races and, and, and belief systems called America. And some of you guys are thinking... Okay, pastor, I don't want to hear all that God stuff because where has God been at in all of this? And let me tell you something. God sees injustice. God sees injustice. God is righteous. The very first murder that took place when Abel was murdered by his brother Cain, uh, God said, the blood of your brother is crying out to me. And I imagine, I, I wonder if the blood of every victim that has been murdered is crying out to God. God sees these things. Then you say, well, why doesn't God make them right? Why doesn't God make them right? And one of the reasons why is because we're all evil. And here's the deal. And, and don't get me wrong. What that dude did was tragic. But the reality is God is holy. Now, when we talk about he was person, someone being a good people in God's eyes, there are no good people. And if God was to judge every person right now and bring his wrath down, we would all deserve to die. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to take the punishment of our sins, including the murderers 
They'll get what they deserve here on earth. Hopefully justice will be served on earth. But the reality is Jesus even died for them. And that brings me to another thing. And this maybe and hopefully this comforts your heart. When you look at George Floyd, I saw pictures of him holding up a Bible. I saw a video of, of him just speaking his heart to the youth. And if George knew the Lord, he went directly into the presence of God. You could take comfort in that. Even though it was a heinous act that brought him there, as soon as he passed and took his last breath here on earth, he took his first breath in heaven. So God sees, and one thing God will, one day God will judge all these things in its time. And, and let me just pause to say, if you cannot see this as a believer, then you are blind. Look around you. All these things going on, the, the, the world is ripe for revival. And revival starts in our own hearts and in our church. So we need to make sure that the message that we're speaking out to people is one that's pointing people to Jesus. Even in our anger and frustration, we can still point people to Jesus. And you're saying, Pastor Elijah, how do I respond to something like that? And I'll tell you exactly what I did. The Lord just kind of gave this to me. And, and the Lord, the, the first thing I did when I saw this, when I was going through all that emotion, is I paused. I paused in wisdom. Because the Bible talks about being uh, quick to listen and slow to speak. I had to pause and, and, and I understood that the wise thing to do is to first pause. And then the second thing I did was pray. I paused in wisdom and I prayed for wisdom. And, and, and the reason why I prayed for wisdom, because I wanted to make sure that whatever thing, message I'm putting out there is from the Lord. So after I prayed for wisdom, then I read from wisdom. I started to get into God's word. And God's word started to, to, to mold and shape my heart and to comfort me and, and, and to let me know that, look, he has not given us the spirit of fear. I'm not going to be walking outside in, in, in fear because of this, because even if I were to die, I know where I'm going. So I paused in wisdom, prayed for wisdom. I read from wisdom. And finally, hopefully, I'm responding in wisdom. I'm responding in wisdom because my hope is that we the Everyone who agrees that this is an injustice, that we do not allow this to divide us, especially those of us in the church. So once you get into God's word and you see things like in Colossians 3, where it says that we as believers have died and our life is hidden in Christ, where he is seated next to the Father in heaven, the right hand of the Father in heaven, we can understand that that is where our destination is. And Paul goes on in Colossians 3 to say, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on the heavenly things. And when you look around, if our mind is set on anything other than our destination, then we will get depressed. Because let me tell you something, this world is falling apart. You're going to see more acts of evil. You're going to see more racist acts. You're going to see more plagues and disease. You're going to see an increase an increase in all these things is one day Jesus is coming back and he's coming back to this wicked world to judge all these things. And you need to make sure that your heart's right. And the way that a Christian can find joy and hope in all these things is to know our destination. I think about my son, Elisha. We used to have Disney passes and we love going to Disneyland. But the one thing that my son hated about going to Disneyland was waking up early, sitting in traffic, being bored. But let me tell you something. He was willing to endure waking up early. He was willing to endure all the hardships it took to get to Disneyland because of the, because of the destination. And in the same way as Christians, we endure all these things, the trials and the traffic of life. Um, we, we waking up early to get into our word because we know where our destination is. Our destination is greater than Disneyland. And, and that is the goal. In this time, I hope that you, before you make, uh, you respond in, in, in any type of way that you would pause in wisdom, that you would, you would pray for wisdom, that you, you would read from wisdom so you can respond in wisdom.
Listen up, Christian. Our first priority in all these things is to reflect Christ to this dying world. Not to divide over certain things. Speak out against injustice. And if and if you speak out against the looting and rioting, make sure you condemn the 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 injustice too. And I guess that's where I guess it's time for me to have a Morpheus moment. What if I told you you can be against police brutality and against rioting and looting at the same time? You know, and the, I, I feel bad because it's a reflection on all the people who are peacefully protesting. But, you know, that's another narrative that the news is going to paint. They're going to capture all that stuff. But let's reflect Christ to this world. Because we cannot allow our pleas for justice to morph into a pursuit for revenge. That's in God's hands. I love you guys. God bless. I just wanted to kind of leave you guys with a prayer at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you guys and pray for all this stuff. Uh, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for who you are and all that you do. And Lord, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us, Lord. And we thank you for such a great salvation. And I pray that those who don't know you, that they would come to know you in a real way. I pray that they would appreciate the death on the cross and the sacrifice and the, the absorbing the wrath and the punishment that they deserve, Lord, by putting their trust in Jesus, Lord, and turning from their sins, that they may have eternal life. I thank you for that. And I pray that people would be convicted through this time to, to, to know you. And Father, I pray for all those who have broken hearts. I pray for the angry. I pray for those who are confused, Lord. I pray for the people who are racist in this situation. I pray for the those who, um, the warmongers. I pray for just every person in this situation, Lord, that not only would they come to know you, but they would come to know your peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, that you would just be with them, Lord, that you would make yourself real to them um, in this situation, Lord. And I pray for the family of joy. George uh, Floyd, Lord, I pray that you would comfort them. I even pray for those police officers, Lord, that they would come to know you, Lord. And we do pray for justice, but we also pray for salvation. So, Father, I lift all these things up to you. Um, we thank you and praise, praise you. We pray that you would just heal this land. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.